knowing your enemy so he doesn't play tricks on you, knowing things about demonology so that you could cast out the devils that attack you. I tried to explain this. They thought for some odd reason I was the enemy. I don't necessarily blame them, but yeah, I don't, I know not. But Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 to 13. Hey, I grew up listening to the hardcore music, okay? And unfortunately, under the sun, Lucifer's people have taken the electric guitar and made the hardcore badass music. And I know about the modernity of things. I know about that which the other false gods go and teach them. I've learned things of the mysteries. You guys gotta not be afraid of me, man. I will never say I'm the Messiah. Never. If I ever said, because they think, they, you know, well, if the synagogue of Satan worships you, Satan's going to tempt you to, you know, be the false guy. No, no, no. I hate Satan. I defeated Satan. The synagogue of Satan, all that, hey, you know. I grew around with friends on Xbox Live. We used to be little troll terrorists and cyber vermins. I know about goat humor. Okay, yeah, I'm a sheep. I'm a sheep of the good shepherd, yeah. But I know about goat humor. I understand the goat. You know, like if he pulls off a little trolly and he says something disturbing, sickening, with swear words, and a bunch of concocting garbage, abominable filth, I say, ah, you're being scum of the earth, you little fucking, you want me to knit Flanders, or should I, you know, sputter out some swear words? Then I have to say sorry to God, because I'm not supposed to swear. So yeah, in the spirit world, I figure this is how it would go, you know, I figure, hey, not to cause a conspiracy, but they may have Google Map Live, their satellites all throughout the midst, they're watching you through your cell phone? Well, they might. Oh, I don't know. And in the midst of this, well, with all that being said, with this being done in the spirit world first, I figure those that can see in the spirit and are tapping in will figure it out eventually anyway. So yeah, the synagogue of Satan next, you know, bows before my feet because in the spirit world, I know, being crucified with Christ already, born again, like unto the ways of John in baptism, fully submerged in the elemental baptism of water, that with Jehovah always winning ever since the beginning, Jesus also winning with Jehovah my Father, which is Jesus' Father also, us and Christ's Father, on the cross 2,000 years ago, and then Revelation 3, Big Rev 3, right? Big Rev 3. Winning again, right? Little Simba, next thing you know, under the lion of the tribe of Judah. I figure, as within, so without, they say, that isn't a phrase that's necessarily taught in the Bible, but yet there is little tidbits that I gathered it together enough that I realized, yeah, the kingdom is within, the temple is within, so the, the body is the temple and all these things, so yeah, the self-reflected image of God, and how we're created in the image of God into his likeness, I figure, yeah... The enemy that talks to us in our head, which also flesh thoughts, manifestation of flesh, feelings from the abominable desires of the heart, and all these things, yet the day star is risen in my heart. I defeated Satan inwardly, microcosmically going inward, 360 degrees spherically, like going down in a fractal expansion, and then from the center of the inner sanctum, also went outward macrocosmically, outward, expanding out in the form of a human bodily shape. Like how the Holy Ghost descended upon Jesus in the form of a human bodily shape, like a dove. And I figure, like the book of Job, with, you know, all these things, Satan has to do what God commands him. He's at his whim. We slap around Satan all day, you know? So... I said in Jesus' name, by technicalities, by the Book of Reality, which is the Holy Bible, no matter where you are, outside of my six-foot circle, you have to bow down in Jesus' name. That as within, so without, maybe I could do telepathy and channel and hear with the inner ear that could hear, the inner eye that can see, and the inner dialogue that could talk, because everyone, not to say that I'm God, no, but we're like little parts of God that, that the psalm says we're as gods, lowercase g, though, lowercase g. And... As such, it's like everybody's in me and I'm in everybody, so too, but in the grand scale, we're in the container. We're contained by Jehovah. So I told Satan to bow down, and no matter if he was uh, in the heights of heaven accusing us before the Father at the throne, or, you know, in the, from the tenth heaven going down the layers, or to say simplified, uh, the first heaven where the fall fly, the second heaven where space is, and the third heaven where the angels are and all these things in the heavenly hosts. 
uh, even if Satan uh, were traveling upon the sand on his belly or eating from the dirt or down in the depths of the sea to the deepest grain of sand thereof, or in whatever layer of hell or in the static abyss or in the fiber optic world we call the internet, wherever he wants to hide. He could be walking on the moon for all I care. I told him, bow down. Bow down in Jesus' name. And he did, because he has no choice. Amen. And then I teleported him to my six-foot circle. So I teleported him in Jesus' name. He appeared in my apartment. I told him to bow down. Next thing you know, again. Because I have to say checkmate after checkmate after checkmate after battlefield of the mind after battlefield of the mind. Flesh versus spirit. The autonomy of the body. And I know that we live in not the uh, false god of um, a certain particular, but this is from the Enochian text when I say we're, we live in Aravat. Adonai, Elohim, El Shaddai, the great I am, yeah? So, Yeshua is like our walking Elohim because he's the Adam's apple, the voice box, the very let there be light of God. And that the conscious thought of God creating a thing of spark of essence of just conscious thought saying he wills it, the let there be light, even to say in Jehovah's brain that we live inside, when he thought in his inner dialogue, even to say if he thought, even to say if I've spoken online, I don't know, but let there be light. That's Jesus Christ. That the essence born, and he is of a deity. Because there always has been father and son. Father didn't create son. But son is the Adam's apple of Jehovah. Therefore, son was always with father and is. Therefore... The Trinity makes sense that when you see Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and you go, well, if we can see God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and there's Gabriel to the left, because the mystery is, is that, you know, the right hand of God, there's Jesus, but to the left of God, there's Gabriel. That, um, you know, uh, in the midst of this, what was I saying? Hold on real quick, let me, um, because they didn't know that, huh? Yeah, so anyway... When you can see God, and you go, well, if we can see him, who contains us? That if we are contained around something, who contains the visible Father, Son, Holy Spirit? That's what I say, look. Part two on the video that uh, I didn't mean for it to cut out, memory ran out. So, when you're in heaven, and you figure to yourself, well, if I can see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit... Who contains the surrounding circumference of all that is that we're inside? Again, I'll say it. There's the silhouette of God and his Adam's apple, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit indwelling with him. And all that is contained is within him. He is the grand container and the grand scale of all things. And the enemy tried to trick us here into thinking this is a false reality and whatever concoction to make us rebel against God, let us remember there's a temporal God of this world, but there'll be a new earth without a sea, okay? And a new heaven. And when it comes down to it, the enemy wanted to break out of the container and use the mathematical formulations of the same way God created the universe to try to contain the container and stomp him out but that will not work because he tried to exalt himself up to the heights and he crashed down. So, yeah. I feel as though, I suppose, as a man, being able to judge the angels, that, well, I only know in part, not in full. I may not know certain things of the mysteries of the spirit world like Lucifer, but hey, Walking upon the earth, unfallen, and right now I say as a repenting saint of the earth, I'm above him. I've defeated him. And I don't mean to offend anyone. For the greater good of all of humanity, let's face it, I defeated Satan for you. Huh? And next thing you know, they're like, oh, but we worship Lucifer. It's like, ah, but the builders, don't you know Isaiah, he deceived the nations. It's like, but I did it for you. I'm not against the builders, so to speak. I think they're good apples and bad apples everywhere. You guys, aye. Some people take the hate too far, there's a conspiracy within a conspiracy, and then they go off in a certain direction, and you got to really think about it, see clearly as time passes by. You all think you're red-pilled, wait until it all gets old and you settle down, then you think about it.
little bit. You know, so, so tell it half out.